the revolution, women played a very integral role. I personally had moved to uh, Libya about six years ago in the city of Zawiya, which um, actually rose up the last week of February until early March, and then was retaken by Gaddafi forces, and for that reason there was an excess amount of security, an excess amount of punishment for those who did not necessarily support the government. Um, and so, till now, Zawiya has one of the highest reported cases of rape and of missing persons and of, of um, military death per capita. So, so it was quite an unfortunate situation happening there at the time, and I believe that women were definitely the backbone of the community. They took on rules that were um, traditionally for men. They st women started to learn how to drive so they could fill up gas tanks. Um, women started to actually go and, you know, shop for their own groceries, or they started leaving the home to take their own kids to school and to ensure that their kids were getting this education, and they actually became very, I think, um, essential in the role in the decisions that were made. They transported weapons. They transported medicine. Um, they fed and clothed and and hid the Tuat away, like the revolutionary fighters, away from the government. If the government came searching for them, they ensured that there was safe passage for them. Um, and for example, our our organization, the Voice of Libyan Women, um, is very proud of of the women we had in Zawiya who who did the transporting of weapons and who did the, the military recon and, and, and really took on roles that were not theirs traditionally and took it on with a sense of responsibility and with a sense of, um, I think, I think a, a right of responsibility that they felt that this was their country and that they had to do these things. So I don't even, and they were very different from men's positions, but I think you couldn't have one without the other. You can't have revolutionary fighters with no weapons and no medicine and no health care and no support system and no um, safe passage. You can't. They won't make it that far. And you cannot have, you know, women providing these things without revolutionary fighters. So I think it was a very fantastic compliment. And I think that one of the most impressive things about the time of the revolution was Libya as a country did not define you based on your age or your gender or your regionality. It defined you instead based on your support for this revolution and your nationalism towards this revolution. And so it was absolutely amazing to see how much could be accomplished when everybody put aside their differences, which is, I think, um, which is one of the main reasons that the Voice of Libyan Women was started up, so we could reachieve that momentum and that moment we have when, when everybody was working together for simply human rights and basic rights and, and every human's fundamental dignity.